what night is pirate night and how do you get reservations to Remy and Palo when there are none available before sailing? I just got off my first ever Disney cruise, so let's talk about the things I wish I knew before going on my first Disney cruise. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Bethany Vinton. If you've seen me before, you know I usually talk all things Disney parks, food and drinks, but today I'm coming at you with the start of a brand new series where I'm breaking down everything I learned about my first ever Disney cruise. I set sail last week and had an absolute blast and I'm gonna break down everything I learned on my cruise in case you are considering cruising on Disney Cruise Line in the future. We're kicking this series off with what I find to be most impactful, and that is the pre-travel stress. And I'm giving you the things I wish I knew before I went on my first ever Disney cruise, so let's jump right in. Okay, the first one is do not stress the Disney Navigator app. When my travel agent originally told me to download this, this is Disney's official app for the cruise line, I thought to myself, why? I'll be honest with you, there is not a lot there when you open the app. Upon signing in, you're gonna be prompted to tell the app whether or not you're on board, but the app you wanna download before traveling. Pre-cruise, it's definitely hard to navigate and it's practically useless. You can book dining reservations such as Remy and Palo, as well as tastings, shore excursions, and spa appointments, but honestly, besides that, it's pretty much useless. It is clear the app is actually made for when you're on the ship because there is so much functionality once you're on board. You can practically do everything within the app, booking and canceling appointments, dinner reservations, viewing the full schedule so you know where to find the characters, and you'll know when themed nights are. Everything is within the app. Some of my favorite features ended up being the chat feature with a cast member, as well as the ability to view and favorite things that were going on on the ship so I could create my own schedule. Also, as much as I am a planner, and this initially killed me not knowing the schedule until boarding, I actually liked that I didn't get the full schedule until that time. It was a breath of fresh air compared to how detailed I am when planning vacations in the park, and I loved every aspect of just going with the flow. But I will say the Navigator app is straight trash on shore, but once on board, it is phenomenal. It is a non-negotiable. You need to download it. All right, number two is do not stress if pre-booking things are not possible. When I booked this cruise with Touring Plans, who are also my travel agents, we went through and we only booked this trip 30 days out, which means it was nearly impossible for me to snag any restaurant reservations or tastings. Disney Cruise Line has a tiered system when it comes to booking on board and shore excursions. Platinum level can book 120 days prior to sailing. Gold is at 105 days. Silver is at 90 days. And first time cruisers like myself in this cruise may book 75 days in advance, which means it might be hard to snag reservations for some places, depending on what tier you're placed on. Since we booked so last minute, we were way past all the windows. However, I was still able to snag both Paolo and Remy for dinner. That is the ship's two fine dining restaurants. Tasting and shore excursions were much harder, but I would check every morning to see if something opened up, and I did end up having some luck with those as well. However, I wish I wouldn't have worried so much because once on board, you can book a lot. My travel agent told me that once I was on board to hop into the Navigator app and immediately request to chat with a dining cast member within the app. The beauty of this is you can do it from anywhere on the ship. There was one person in the queue before me, and when it was my turn, I was able to ask if they had any openings for brunch at either Paolo or Remy, which they did, and they were able to book my brunch reservations for me while I was having lunch at Cabana's. So much better than waiting in line at guest services, and it's all through the Navigator app. Another great one is booking tastings. Once on board, almost every single tasting had availability and I was able to get into tastings I previously could not. It was also easy to cancel them as well because all you have to do is chat with guest services in the app at least 24 hours before your tasting. But seriously, don't sweat it if you can't get reservations before your cruise. You can jump in on the chat and see what they have once you're on board and you can always add more tastings throughout the week if there's availability, which they had on my cruise. All right, my next one is something that I actually was told to do and I didn't do, so I'm still adding this to the list, and that is pack lightly. Even though I was warned and I knew about it, I still packed way too much. I did a live over on Touring Plans Instagram with Jay from The Ship Life. He is a pro cruiser, and I'll leave his channel link below. But when I asked him, what is something people pack that they don't need? He said, too many clothes. 
and I didn't listen, and he was right. I don't even think I went through half the things I packed, yet there are certain things that you need, like nice outfits for Remy or Paolo. If you're not doing it, they also have formal and semi-formal nights on board, so even if you aren't doing fine dining, you still can use some nice clothing. Also, I say pack more bathing suits than you think you'll need, but the rest of the cruise is just cruise casual, and I found myself up on deck more often than expected. There isn't a lot of room in the cabins, although they're more spacious than I thought they would be, so just pack what you need. Don't overpack. It is not necessary. Okay, next off, let's talk about booking excursions. On this cruise, it was a seven-night Western Caribbean cruise. We had four stops that included Cozumel, Mexico, Grand Cayman, Jamaica, and Disney's private island, Castaway Key. And out of all of those stops, we only had an excursion booked at one place, which was in Cozumel, Mexico. And this was by far my biggest regret of the entire trip. Excursions are a great way to see the islands and honestly, the safest and easiest way to go about doing so. Booking through Disney is great because they give you your meeting locations in your Navigator app, they make sure you're well taken care of, and the cruise ship will not leave without you if you are late from your excursion. I will also say that not booking excursions is my number one biggest regret, and that's because I also didn't love Jamaica, but I will say the only reason I think I didn't love it is because we did not have an excursion booked. The port in Jamaica was actually built by Royal Caribbean and is fenced in, and while you can explore outside of it, I honestly just didn't feel safe, so we spent a lot of time back on the ship that day. Excursions are just a great way to comfortably leave the ship and see more of the island. If I were to cruise again, I would 100% book more excursions. All that being said, make sure you are flexible. Even though we didn't have anything planned on Castaway Key, it actually thundered all morning and they ended up canceling all excursions for the day. And while I think that is rare, just be prepared to go with the flow, but there's still a lot to do on and off the ship if you don't have excursions planned. I will just say my personal biggest regret of this trip was not booking more at every destination. Okay, next up, I know that this kind of like might sound ridiculous to you, but it is order whatever you want to eat whenever you want to eat it. The thing about Disney Cruise Line is most of the dining is included and you can order as much as you want. Yes, I am a Disney food content creator, so of course I had to order a lot of food, but anyone can do it and you should. You're on vacation, treat yourself. So your rotational nightly dining room service, breakfast and lunch buffets and options are all included in your cruise. I was fully aware of this. However, night one at dinner, I was slightly scared to order a lot. Wrong. Your servers are happy to bring you whatever you ask for. You are on vacation, treat yourself. I will say this too, after night one, if you don't know your servers rotate with you, you have the same servers every single night. They were aware that I create content on the internet specifically around food. So Keytut and Duvall were servers and they were great at knowing I wanted to try everything and making sure I tried all the specialty food and drinks. Speaking of ordering whatever you want though, I will say my best bang for your buck on the cruise is brunch at Palo. At the time of posting this, they're still doing plated meals and it is all you can eat. Yes, it's an extra charge. It's $45 a person and you do need a reservation. However, we ordered five entrees in addition to all the other food we ordered and our server Tony was amazing at recommending things and being accommodating. So while you're on your cruise, order whatever you want and enjoy yourself. Most everything is included, so take this opportunity to order whatever you want without the shame. And if you do rotational dining and you love something from the previous night, you can always ask to see if they have extra and they're happy to bring it to you if they do. All right, next up, let's talk about seasickness because before my cruise, this was definitely a 15 out of 10 stress level for me. I was so concerned about getting seasick, both for me and my mom. My mom especially, she does not do well with any type of anything. She gets sick on Slinky Dog. She has been diagnosed with vertigo. I was worried about getting seasick. I was so concerned and I wish I had just relaxed a little. I will say I felt like we didn't really have a rough cruise, which I know that's not always the case, but we were on top of seasickness before it could even get to us. Rarely did I feel the ship rocking. Most of the time, it seemed like a vibration to me. There were a few occasions, especially on days when we were traveling further, like days at sea, where I played the game, am I drunk or is this boat just rocking? But neither my mom or I experienced any seasickness. However, we did come prepared, get on top of it. I took over-the-counter medicine on night one, and I really didn't feel like I needed it after that, so I never took it again. 
My mom does suffer badly from motion sickness. She cannot ride Slinky Dog in Disney World, and she's been diagnosed with vertigo. So we went into this cruise prepared. She got prescription medicine from her doctor, but actually never ended up using it. She ended up loving Blisslet's Nausea Relief Bracelets. They actually sell them on board Disney Cruise Line. They have a ton of options on their website, which I will link below. They're really cute, unlike that sweatband feel of other acupuncture bracelets. These look like jewelry, and they prevented her from feeling anything on this trip. Of course, you can always be on a cruise where the sea's a little more rough, but be prepared, and I wished I had not stressed about this so much. Okay, another one that I actually did, but I only did it a week or two out because I was told to by other people, and I feel like everyone should know this, is joining the Facebook group for your cruise. If you go into Facebook and search your cruise's sailing dates, you will find an entire Facebook group dedicated to people that are on your cruise. This is a great way to meet other people before you go if you're interested in doing fish extenders, which is kind of like a gift exchange between passengers on board, or if you wanna meet up with others for a bar hop, this option's great. Also, if socializing is not your thing, don't worry. There is always tips. People tell you if they drop reservations or tastings, it is just a good way of creating a community before you board. And finally, last but not least, yes, this video is sponsored by Touring Plans, but I'm gonna tell you why you should use a travel agent when cruising and why it is pivotal in saving yourself time. Your travel agent can take care of the major details and you need a travel agent that specializes in Disney travel, which is why I love Touring Plans. I have used their services for years and they are the only agency I recommend, but they will handle booking your cruise, travel accommodations, including flight, pre and post cruise hotels and transportation to and from the cruise terminals. And let me say this, calling Disney Cruise Line is the absolute worst. I am so thankful I had a travel agent for this cruise because to book my flight and hotel through Disney meant 15 hours on hold with Disney. Yes, that is how bad cruise wait times are right now. Most people do not understand that the huge value of using a travel agent is time. So do not wait on hold for 15 hours. Do not do it. Use a travel agent. And if you book a new cruise with touring plans and you set sail before September 30th of 2022, we are sending you free champagne to your stateroom on the first and last night of your cruise. We're calling this one Bubbly on Bethany. And honestly, how can you go wrong with free champagne? But seriously, check out the link below. Tell them I sent you. And if you book and sail on a new cruise by September 30th, we're sending you champagne. So those are my top things that I wish I knew before I cruised on Disney Cruise Line for the first time. If you've been sailing before though, let me know in the comments, like let's have a little chat about what you think are things you wish you would have known before your first or even your 10th Disney cruise. What is the top tip that you wish you would have known and you could tell previous you? Cause I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. But if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Come back on Sundays because every Sunday I have a new vlog from my entire series of my seven night Western Caribbean cruise. This Sunday, it is Mother's Day and we're headed to Remy. So it was a fun day and there is a lot of fun content in that. And be sure to come back later in the week because there'll be videos just like this. And next week, I'm actually gonna break down is Remy worth the price? Because Remy's $125 a person. I We ordered dinner. We did the wine pairing. We upgraded our steak. I'm going to break down everything we did and if I do it again and what you should order at Remy as well. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.